Welcome back, 3D SSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics, and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3D SSPP software developed here at the University of Michigan. This time, I am going to continue showing you how you can use posture prediction to accurately set up a job task in 3D SSPP. To start, we're going to enter a fairly common lifting task posture by using posture prediction. Navigate to the task input dropdown, and from there, find the posture prediction selection. Click that, and when the posture prediction menu appears, we'll start entering our hand locations. Our horizontal positions are going to be 14 on either side, followed by a 20 inch vertical location. Finally, our lateral measurements are going to be 8 and negative 8. Sometimes when you look at a photo that you've taken from a work site after you've entered the hand locations for that job task, the 3D SSPP posture prediction will look somewhat off. Say for this posture, the picture we're using depicts the worker a little more stooped over when performing this lifting task. Posture prediction is a great starting point for hand locations. Next, we commonly fine tune our final posture by manipulating the joints in our various avatar views in the main 3D SSPP interface. To do that, I will exit the posture prediction menu and use my mouse to find the darkened joint circle that I want to change. Note that you will not be able to manipulate the white circles displayed on any of these views. You'll also see that when you move your mouse over the joints that you can move, a small alert will appear at your mouse's location telling you that you have that option. If you hover over a white circle that still gives you the option of moving that joint, it is usually because there is a joint that that joint has obscured from view. You can see this in the side view where we can still move the center of the hips even though there is a white circle on top of it. I'll choose the center of hips and click and drag using my mouse to make my avatar's posture more of a squatting position. Posture prediction is still being used here, just now with the added stipulation that the avatar's hips should be lower to the ground. This is a very powerful tool in the 3D SSPP, and I would recommend setting your hand positions with posture prediction in order to get those very accurately placed, and then come into the main avatar view area to move the other joints until they're just where you want them to be. When working by using posture prediction, you'll notice a couple of constraints after you've applied posture prediction to a work task. If I move any of my avatar's joints around, you will notice that the hand and foot locations do not move. In addition, if you move a joint in the upper body, like an upper back joint, you will not be moving the leg angles. In order to set the leg angles, the best method is to use the hip joints. And then once you have the hips and legs set, you can move to the back or trunk joints to get the avatar's back positioned where you want it. If you want to change the hand and foot locations that are set by posture prediction, hit the control key and that will highlight only those two joints, and you now have the option of moving both feet or both hands with your mouse at the same time. If you do not hit the control key, you will only be able to move one hand at a time. If the hands are on top of each other, then the closest hand will be moved. If you need to move the hand underneath, then use the front view to move the hand. If you press the shift key while positioning joints in the avatar view windows, you will have the option to rotate joints. If I press shift and select the hand joint by clicking and dragging with my left mouse button, you'll see that I can now rotate the hand joint. If I want to rotate the wrist, I'll shift click with my left mouse button, and now my avatar's forearm and hand joints are rotating around the elbow and so on with the rest of the joints. I recommend playing around with this feature to become familiar with how the joints rotate in 3D SSPP. Sometimes when you move your upper body joints, there is a chance that you can slightly move the lower body out of position. If you're analyzing a job task that you know should have very specific positions in one area of the body, you can use the locking mode. In order to lock the trunk after you've positioned the avatar, you can right-click on your avatar window and navigate down to the locking mode option. From here you can lock the trunk of the avatar, and now you can see that if I move my hands that the trunk is not affected. That's all for this second video in setting avatar posture by using the posture prediction menu. Check out further videos in this 3D SSPP tutorial series to learn more about how the software can help you analyze physical demands in the workplace. Thanks for watching.